Hello. In addition to its consequences for public health and families' well-being, the spread of the coronavirus is likely to have severe short-term consequences for the UK's public finances, thanks primarily to the economic disruption arising from the necessary public health restrictions currently being imposed upon us. The government's policy response will also have a large direct budgetary cost, but the measures are designed to limit the long-term economic and fiscal damage. We can be confident that the cost of inaction would be much greater. The Office for Budget Responsibility was created to provide independent scrutiny and analysis of the public finances for the benefit of the public, Parliament and to provide the government with a basis for taking policy decisions. To that end, today we're publishing an illustrative scenario showing the potential impact of an economic lockdown on government spending, revenues, borrowing and debt. This should not be seen as a central forecast. We have no basis for knowing how long the most serious public health restrictions will last, and that's a matter for the government and for its medical advisers. For the sake of illustration, we have assumed an economic lockdown lasting for three months that is then partially lifted over the following three months. There are, of course, many other potential scenarios that one could have chosen. So we try to show how our results would vary if the lockdown lasted for longer or less time or if the economic impact were greater or smaller. Under the three-month scenario, we estimate that public sector borrowing would be around £220 billion higher this year than we estimated at the time of the budget in March. That would take the overall budget deficit to 14% of GDP, its highest level since the Second World War. But that should be a temporary hit. Although the longer the economic lockdown lasts, the greater danger there is that the future potential of the economy will be scarred by significant business failures and by the difficulties the unemployed face getting back into the labour market. That would translate into a higher structural budget deficit that wouldn't disappear automatically as the economy recovered. But the government's policy measures are designed to avoid this by supporting the incomes of individuals and businesses and by helping them to finance themselves. Even a temporary increase in the budget deficit would mean a higher level of government debt relative to the size of the economy and possibly higher government debt spending relative to the size of the economy in the long term too. But there's no sign yet that this government would be confronted with a sort of large structural budget deficit that its predecessors felt they had to reduce in the years following the financial crisis. We hope that you find the analysis that we've produced today of interest. You can find it on our website, obr.uk. Thank you very much for listening.